Are you new to cloud computing, looking to budget your first deployment, or wanting to optimize your current Azure spend? Then stay tuned because we are talking about the Azure pricing in this two-part series of the Azure Enablement Show. Welcome back to the Azure Enablement Show. I'm your host, Thomas Maurer. This is the first episode of the two-part series about Azure pricing. I'm joined today by Kyle from Azure Marketing and AJ, a product manager for Azure Migrate. In today's episode, Kyle is going to talk about how Azure pricing works and how accurately estimate building your next Azure project. And then AJ gives us a short demonstration of Azure Migrate. In episode two, Kyle will be back and covering budgeting for specific Azure service and optimization. Welcome, Kyle and AJ. Thanks for joining me today. Um, Kyle, can you give us a quick overview about the Azure pricing options? Yes, thanks, Thomas, for having me. So we know that businesses want to focus on their goals, not spending time on how to figure out how Azure pricing works um, and, and how it's built. So we want to make sure Azure pricing is simple, transparent, and predictable for our customers. That sounds great and makes, obviously, a lot of sense. So if a customer is considering Azure for their workloads, how should the they get started? Like, where should they go? How can they figure out stuff? I think the best way to explore pricing is by looking at an example customer. So let's say we have Contoso, which is a fictitious consumer electronics company. Contoso is considering moving their on-premises environment to the cloud to reduce their operational costs and improve their customer experience. Prior to moving, um, they want to learn how Azure services work, how they're priced, and what are the options for, pay uh, for paying for them. This way, they'll be more confident when moving their services to the cloud. So they might be, asking, might be asking themselves some questions like, how do I get charged using Azure services? And what is the consumption-based model? That's actually an interesting one. So um, consumption-based models uh, are obviously very famous for in, in cloud especially. Um, can you get us a little bit more about how that would work in Azure and how you get charged for Azure services in that case? Sure. So Azure offers a pay-as-you-go pricing model for cloud computing. And this falls under the operational expenditure because it operates on a consumption-based model. With, Az with Azure, you're only paying for the IT resources you use, not for the physical infrastructure, uh, electricity, security, or anything else that's associated with maintaining the data center. And uh, you only pay for the IT resources you use for that month. Also, there's no upfront commitment. So that means you can scale or stop using these services anytime you want. And to help test and learn and um, touch these services uh, more, Azure provides um, the ability to select free products up to, up to 12 months once you create an Azure uh, account. So the pay should go and the free tier account is a great way to um, you know, test and get your feet wet within Azure. That sounds awesome. So yeah, I, I agree. So pay as you go is obviously a great way uh, to get started and try things out. But also if you know not really know what how big your workloads are going to scale right over time and things like that. So definitely a great way of doing that. So we talked about Contoso. Uh, what would be the next for Contoso once they have a better understanding about how Azure pricing works? Yeah, so next they want to be estimating their project cost. Um, they need to know what solutions they want to migrate or build within Azure. And so this comes through like collaboration, internal alignment uh, with their dev team, with their uh, leadership. And so in this example, they want to migrate over the AI powered product recommendation tool. Um, and to start, they need to know what the total, uh, total cost of ownership would be if they move their on-premises environment to Azure. And we have a few tools that help do that. First, we have the TCO calculator, which is the total cost of ownership calculator. And we have the Azure Migrate tool. The TCO calculator helps assess at a high level uh, what the estimated savings would be if a customer were to move um, their on-premises environment to Azure. With Azure Migrate, it's used to help assess, create a more accurate business case, and to plan your migration. Both of these tools can be used when estimating cost. Uh, for this example, Contosa is going to use Azure Migrate because they want to take advantage of the business case capability. Um, Azure also provides guidance for architecting solutions that are cloud native. And so we have something called the architecture, uh, Azure Architecture Center, which has established patterns and best practices to build these new products as solutions within Azure. This is fantastic. And there are some awesome tools, obviously, with the TCO calculator and the business planner and Azure Migrate and so on, which really help our customers identify how much money they're going to spend and how much they, the savings especially can be um, if they use uh, Azure. So now let's shift gears a little bit uh, and switch to 
uh, HA. Um, so HA, how would Contoso uh, actually migrate their services and workloads to Azure using Azure Migrate? Sure thing, Thomas. Uh, so let us start by visiting Azure Migrate in the Azure portal. Discover your data center inventory, like from VMware, Hyper-V, or public clouds like AWS to understand, uh, gain a comprehensive understanding of your data center estate. So once your inventory is discovered, you can build a comprehensive business case by providing just a few simple inputs, such as your target location, your preferred migration strategy, or you can let Azure decide one for you. So once you do that, within minutes, Azure Migrate will generate the business case using industry benchmarks providing you a detailed breakdown of your current versus future state costs. In this scenario, uh, we see that the customer will reduce IT infra costs by up to 68%, saving their organization a staggering $2 million annually. You will see year-on-year -year current versus future costs, as well as unique Azure incentives, such as a savings from Azure hybrid benefits, extended security updates by applying the uh, existing Windows Server and SQL Server licenses to Azure. But it doesn't end there. Dive deeper into the detailed on-premises versus Azure cost report to gain insights into contributing factors for savings. Analyze compute, license, storage, and even security costs to make informed decisions. Our latest capabilities also allow you to envision security cost savings by unifying the security management with Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Furthermore, Azure Migrate provides detailed reports on IaaS and PaaS, helping you identify ideal Azure services and the most cost-effective Azure offers based on your usage. You'll receive recommendations for the best migration strategy, whether it is migrating or modernizing to Azure. And with the ability to override default assumptions, you can create customized what-if scenarios, ensuring your business case is tailored to your organization's need. For example, compute or security costs, you can go ahead and change them on them. You can also export this business case for stakeholder sign-offs. Awesome. Thank you very much, HA. Uh, this was a great walkthrough through Azure Migrate. In fact, by the way, uh, when I worked with customers to migrate to Azure, this was one of my favorite tools to actually go out and also show them like what savings they can do and also walk them through the different pricing benefits there actually are, right? It's um, sometimes it's hard to discover all these, but with Azure Migrate, you get a real good understanding how that what is available and then also how it works for their own environments. So again, big fan of that. Um, so Kyle, um, so we uh, now they learned how to estimate um, the project cost and what the project will cost when they move to Azure. What is next for the Contoso team? Yes, in the next episode, we'll talk about how they can budget for these specific Azure services and how they can go about optimizing their environment once they deploy. Awesome. Kyle and AJ, thank you very much uh, for sharing your knowledge today about Azure pricing and Azure Migrate. And for our viewers, be sure to check out part two of our conversation in the next episode. And as a reminder, all the links you can find in the description below, uh, which we basically talked about during that video. So thanks for watching the Azure Enablement Show.